This little lady is Sunny. She's an orange tail guppy that I got a couple months ago. Ever since I got her, her boyfriend Bruce had been trying to impregnate her, and I thought it would be really interesting to document her pregnancy. You can tell she's pregnant because of the dark spots near her anal fin. These spots darken as she gets closer and closer to giving birth. This is her about a week before she gave birth. I thought she was ready, but she had a little more time to wait. Little did I know something else interesting was happening in another one of my tanks. Say hello to Mars and Pluto, my two Dalmatian mollies. I didn't even know one of them was pregnant until I saw this little baby. I had found five little mollies. I removed them from their parents' tank because I noticed a lot of aggressive fish that were trying to eat them. I had noticed two fish that were a little weaker than the others, and one of them later died. A couple days later, I saw some baby gobbies swimming around at the top of this tank. Sunny was already giving birth, so I moved her into this nursery tank. This was for the protection of the mother and the babies. I noticed that I could tell when Sunny was having contractions. She would be standing still but have her fins clamped down, as if she was pushing. I started moving the baby fish into another tank, because it was getting a little crowded in the nursery. I ended up with about 30 baby guppies, who lived with the four Dalmatian mollies and a bunch of baby mystery snails. Looking back on it, I probably shouldn't have overstocked this tank so much, but unfortunately this was the only tank that I had left. There is really no excuse though, and I should have been more prepared. This tank got dirty really quickly, even though I was doing partial water changes weekly. I should have known that a tank this small would accumulate waste quickly, and that the water quality would be extra sensitive. I realized I needed to make some changes to how I was keeping this tank. I wish I had realized this sooner, because overnight, almost all my baby fish had died. It was really heartbreaking because I was so excited to see these babies grow, and I knew that I had contributed to their passing. I wish I could go back knowing that this tank wasn't just new tank syndrome cloudy, but probably also had a lot of pneumonia buildup. I'm really mad at myself for not being more careful, but I'm trying to take this as a learning experience, and I hope you can too. All of the baby mystery snails and most of the baby fish had died except for these three. I moved them to a nursery tank in an established aquarium, but I noticed in the background another baby fish. There were no other baby fish in the tank other than this one and the three in the nursery. I isolated a pregnant fish I had because I thought she was giving birth, but she hasn't popped out any more babies, so I'm not really sure where this guy came from. I'm really sad about what happened. And if I could go back, I would change so many things. But all I can do is take these things into consideration as I prepare for my next batch of babies. Thank you for watching this episode of the Beta Diaries. I wanted to post my mistakes on here as well as my successes to hopefully help somebody else avoid so much fish death. I promise I'm much better at taking care of grown fish. This was just my first time trying to raise baby fish. So now we know what not to do. Tune in next week for more updates and tips about fish keeping.